Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, you can see from the, uh, my materials that it's supposed to be my boss, uh, Vice President Xu Chikun, to give the presentation. But he has some urgent, important issue to deal with at university. So I will uh, represent on behalf of him. So uh, my presentation will cover three aspects. Uh, briefly, introduction of Tsinghua University and uh, the building academic integrity system and uh, cultivating integrity culture. And uh, lastly, the problem is still existing in our university. So the facts and figures at Tsinghua University uh, we are research-oriented, comprehensive university. Currently, we have 20 schools, 58 departments, and uh, our graduate school, graduate students are two times larger than the undergraduate students. So we are research-oriented university. We are very proud that we have many outstanding faculties. So here I show some of them. Uh, I forgot to mention, the last one is my boss, uh, Professor Xue Chi Kun. We are ranking number one in terms of research funding and the numbers of publications and our patent uh, applied and has been granted among Chinese universities. And you can see in the uh, left up this chart that our global ranking are uh, increasing steadily. So in 2019, we ranked 17 in QS, 22nd in Times Higher Education, 50 in ARWU. So now I'm uh, talking about uh, how Tsinghua built academic integrity system and cultivation integrity culture. Uh, from Tsinghua perspective, we think we have uh, uh, how many four understandings about uh, integrity system. The first is pursuit of academic excellence independent academic judgment and a well-established academic integrity system are the basic requirement to world-class university. And academic atmosphere is essential part of university culture, fully demonstrate its tradition, philosophy, and the quality of education and talent cultivation. And academic integrity, education, and promoting academic atmosphere deeply related to the ultimate question of how to educate and who will be educated, which is essential to ensure the quality of education and talent cultivation. It is an inherent pursuit of a university and also a essen essential requirement for comprehensively improving the quality of the higher education. And the last one, at Tsinghua University, we have built a rigorous, diligent, truthful, and creative academic atmosphere to guide our faculty and students to pursue their study and research rigorously and to be a person of integrity. So uh, Tsinghua University built a comprehensive uh, integrity system with four mechanisms from the rules and regulation, that's a fundamental and uh, education, which is the core, supervision and the restriction to guarantee, uh, investigation and uh, 
discipline of academic misconduct. That's a punishment for the uh, bottom line. So uh, for this uh, rules and regulation, Tsinghua developed uh, several rules under the guidance of several opinions of Minister of Education on strengthening academic integrity. The first one is uh, several opinions of Tsinghua University on strengthening academic integrity, which answer the question, what to do? And the second is academic ethics code for teachers of Tsinghua University, which answers how to do. And the third is interim measures of Tsinghua University on handling academic misconduct, which answers how to deal with misconduct. In 2016, Tsinghua issued a new measures for preventing and handling academic misconduct in Tsinghua University, which specify who shall be responsible for accepting and reviewing allegations of misconduct and provide more detailed procedure on investigating of academic misconduct. In July 2018, we issued Tsinghua University Code of Academic Ethics, which stipulates the principles that academic research should follow in academic research, project application, research collaboration, academic evaluation, etc. And other important rules, including Code of Scientific Ethics for graduate students of Tsinghua University, several opinions of Tsinghua University on strengthening the work of academic committee, articles of association of the academic committee of Tsinghua University. And the second part of this uh, mechanism, I'm going to talk about our integrity education. Our goal is to establish a comprehensive, flexible, and multi-level education and training system for all faculty members with focus on teachers' professional ethics. We require new faculty members to take courses on academic ethics during their orientation. Faculty who receive a word of ethical model of teachers, good teachers and friends, new academics, and etc. will be highly respected and vigorously promoted at Tsinghua University. We also require freshmen and new graduate students to learn about academic ethics as one of their first course in the university. And academic integrity education has been incorporated into Tsinghua's regular courses. Some special courses on academic norms and professional ethics feature, featuring different requirements for different disciplines and some optional courses open to all undergraduate students and graduate students, such as scientific and technical research paper writing, spirit of science and misconduct, scientific ethics, and etc. Also, we utilize various platforms to achieve full media dissemination of academic ethics. We prepare reading materials such as handbook on research integrity and academic norms and graduate students handbook on academic ethics and norms and incorporated the following in these handbooks. Regulations 
and the requirements of Wernon University and research institution, both domestically and abroad. Cases that has been publicly discussed, examples of common mistakes made by graduate students when writing papers. We also use some new media platform. For example, Tsinghua University specially designed for graduate students on this integrity. And also we use some uh, very popular social media, for example, Sano Weibo, Ren Ren, and other uh, popular media platform. And 2019 is a year of promoting academic atmosphere. We organize several activities, for example, workshops, publicity, conferences, panel discussion, forums, and other lectures, exams, to promote the academic atmosphere. So we strictly hold the bottom line and never cross the red line of integrity. And the third part of uh, the mechanism is to adopt uh, supervision and restriction. We constantly improve the supervision mechanism to prevent academic misconduct. Strictly re review of faculty's application material for tenure and promotion. Since 2003, application for full professor are subject to anonymous peer review. If the reviewer raises any questions on the authentic authenticity or credibility of the application materials, or on the application's guidance instructions of the students, thorough investigation will be required. If any misconduct does exist, the application for a full professor will be one vote vetoed. Since 2009, as a pilot project, some schools Departments have used the degree dissemination academic dis misconduct detection system for evaluation of graduate thesis. Starting in 1910, academic normative no check are required for all degree dissertation which have promote, promoted faculty and students' awareness of academic norms and uh, dissertation, improving, improved uh, their ability to identify academic misconduct, made academic integrity inspection more normalized and uh, systematic, significantly reduce overlapping tax in degree dissertation. Academic committee at both university level and department level play the key roles in the investigation and the discipline of academic misconduct. Some subcommittee on academic ethics is responsible for organized academic ethics education activities, investigating and reviewing academic misconduct and providing discipline suggestions. We have zero tolerate on academic misconduct. Once confirmed, our university will handle it seriously in according with relevant regulation and procedures. So the full mechanism is to investigating and the discipline of academic misconduct. I'd like to share some case in Tsinghua University. In 2005, a faculty member named Liu in the medical school 
intentionally fabricated research e experiment and misrepresented other people's achievement in his res resume available to the public. After investigation, the university revoked his professorship and terminated his employment with Tsinghua University. In 2009, the University Academic Committee found out that there was obvious plagiarism in postdoc published papers and terminated his postdoc study. In 2014, the final project report submitted by a faculty named Liu in Department of Mechanical Engineering was found to be basically identical to his application proposal for his project, with no substantial research being conducted. A great portion of the project results were found to be fabricated. Professor Liu's employment was terminated by the university after investigation. In 2017, papers published by a graduate, uh, graduated PhD student and his supervisor were found to be self plagiarizing, reusing images and fabricating experimental results. The university decided to revoke the PhD doctor degree and re required the supervisor to retire earlier, ahead of schedule. So lastly, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about some prob problem that still existing in building research integrity system. So some students are still not very familiar with university rules and regulations on academic integrity, which weakens the restrictive and discipline function of academic code of con conduct. Some gray area in conception of the line between academic norms and misconduct. So some faculty and students are not sure whether duplicate submission co-authorship, hatch-hacking, and other questionable but not too serious practice constitute research misconduct. Disciplinary measures are not so effective due to lack of restrictive power. So there are no discipline measures for not so serious plagiarism in coursework and paper. Not enough resources to detect all misconduct activities, such as some people tend to take their chance. And problem in handling special issues. Some problem for the past, Citation problem may be attributed to the loose citation norms in the past, unclear norms standard for some cases. So there are some questions. Is that duplicate submission to submit the Chinese version of a paper to a Chinese, Chinese journal and the English to an international version? Different uh, discipline may have different attitudes towards duplicated uh, submission. So this uh, problem is uncertain. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Ma. Thank you very much for sharing the Tsinghua experience. Any questions from the floor? Thank you very much for your presentation.
Um, today, 30 years ago, um, also students from Tinghua, uh, the Tinghua University have been murdered who fought for the right for free speech. Uh, what do you think um, on political influence on research integrity? Um, do you think um, there can be um, sufficient research integrity if there are topics that cannot be studied on at your university? Uh, so, the, the first question, uh, I think the academic freedom is uh, global, globally applied to every university. So, the, the people have different opinions, so they can present their opinions. Uh, I, I think, um, be honestly, uh, I'm not studying on, on this area, but uh, uh, people can, can speak in academic area what they want to speak, even in their thesis, different opinion can have this uh, debate uh, publicly. Well, I, I think Dr. Ma sharing the progress in Tsinghua University in facing and attempting to address various integrity issues and as an in institution learning to advance in an international platform, it is demonstrating a bit of commitment. I think that we should appreciate that. Second question. Uh, we were hearing yesterday that um, in some Chinese institutions there are direct links, financial incentives for publications, particularly publications in high impact journals which may have the opposite effect of all the measures that we've heard out about today. What does your university do? Does it have financial incentives directly linked to publications? Uh, uh, in fact, in, in my talk the other day, I mentioned a little bit about financial incentive, cash incentive for the investigators in order to encourage them to publish. Yeah. Is such practice happening in Tsinghua University? Uh, I think 10 years ago, yes. 10 years ago? Yeah. Uh, there is no more uh, incentive policy for the publication now. And uh, there is no more incentive for any achievement. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's good to hear. <laughs> so this is a clear statement. And uh, indeed, many in universities in the world, not just in China, they do use uh, cash incentive. But uh, Dr. Ma explained the first slide, although it's a little bit blurry because the, the brightness as such is that when the research is climbing up to reach certain quality at the moment in Tsinghua is extremely competitive, it's not necessary to use such incentive anymore yeah. for this particular university. That's yeah. not to say everybody. I, I think a different, uh, you know, different stage, uh, Tsinghua University has developed a different policy. Second question. Hi, um, thank you very much for that talk. My name is Renee Hook and I'm from Foss in San Francisco. Um, my question is, um, you mentioned, I think that there are departmental as well as university level academic committees and I'm wondering if the university provides outward facing guidance to people outside the university or even outside China um, to whom uh, concerns or questions ought to be addressed in, in case there are issues of potential of misconduct that they'd like to discuss with the university official. So I guess in your presentation, you focus a lot on what's happening in Tsinghua, focusing your own student your own mm -hmm. faculty members, mm -hmm. but Tsinghua is actually a very international platform as well. I guess the question is, do you reach out to the community beyond just Tsinghua, the faculty member and the students? Am I right? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if the university has either through its website or through other outreach mechanisms, yeah. uh, ways of communicating um, to other yes. people to whom uh, we could discuss issues with the okay. academic committee or others in, who are well placed to discuss potential misconduct okay. issues. Okay, so not, your, your question is not only whether Tsinghua is reaching out, but whether there's any venue that other people can access and communicate in terms of responsible conduct of research. Uh, yeah, um, 
I think we have uh, some department and the school they uh, uh, study on this ASX. Uh, maybe they participate in the international uh, activities, uh, the, the workshop like this one. And that's for the, their professional shape. But uh, I myself am not engaged in any of these activities. I guess the answer is that institutionally, as a university, there is a formal mechanism, but investigators are free to uh, participate in any of these uh, research integrity related activities. I myself, I have given a talk in Tsinghua University as a visiting speaker. So I guess it is also up to us to contribute. It, it, you know, in the, in the arena of responsible conduct of research, it, it is open. Next question, please. Andrew Gray from Auckland. Did I understand you to say that at your institution, uh, duplicate submission and gift authorship are not regarded as important um, issues of research integrity? Whether gift authorship is seen as an issue to be addressed? Well, from my understanding of the slides were that duplicate submission and, well, Authorship hitchhiking, I assume, is gift authorship. We're regarded as minor infractions. Is that correct? Uh, I, I don't think that's a minor duplicate. Uh, I, what I'm talking about is uh, some people, they, they think there's not misconduct if they send Chinese, Chinese version to Chinese journal English version to international journal. So they might think that is not a uh, misconduct. What does the institution think? So that is, we, we don't think that is a right to do, but there's not a clear regulation to address that. Yeah. She, she's citing a few examples to show the degree of ignorance of students or investigators in Tsinghua, which admittedly are problems. And that's what the slide meant. Last question. Thank you. Um, as a pioneer of pushing forward academic integrity in China, do you think it's uh, necessary for Tsinghua to like, raise the bar for undergraduate students, for example, uh, screen for academic misconduct and bachelor degree essays? Sure, definitely. But is there anything that like you're moving on to something like that? Can you speak a little louder? Uh, because it's not mentioned in the slide, so I know it's all graduate level, but um, in undergraduate level, I think um, it could be problematic. Are there any measures targeting undergraduate students? Uh, I think the undergraduate students, uh, we don't find any cases so uh, all these related to the research work, mostly uh, graduate students yes. and PhD students. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Any other question? If not, so, let's please join me to thank Dr. Ma for sharing with us. If, uh, if there's any question which I cannot answer, I will bring back to university to the uh, academic committee. Thank you. I think this is a very, very good start. <laughs>